So welcome back to Aquadu, and we're just about to delve into one of the more complex parts of the program, which is to develop the part of the program that allows the player to select which one of their pieces they want to move. If the result of the die roll means that the piece selected cannot be moved, then an appropriate message should be displayed and the player should be allowed to select that other piece. A piece cannot be moved if the space the piece would be moved to is already occupied by the same player's other piece, unless it's a safe space. The piece is on start and the result of the die roll is a 4, because if you're at the start you can't go backwards. The piece selected is one of the opponent's pieces and the piece is on finish and the result of the die roll is not a four. So in those circumstances you can't move and the player has to then pick a different piece to move. So let's see how we might want to get started with this. So the first thing we probably want to do is ask them to um, enter uh, which piece they want, so either A or B. So let's make a new subroutine for this and we're going to call it uh, move piece. And we're going to need to give it the die value again because it needs to know that in order to do uh, the calculations necessary. So let's say um, piece to move, and let's ask them what they, uh, which piece they would like to move. Okay, so uh, which piece would you like to move? And let's prompt them A, B. Okay. Oops. And let's just make it dot lower as well. So what actually we'll make it upper because we've no, it's consistent with what we typed. But whatever they type in now will be converted to uppercase. So we can say if, let's first of all assume they've got this completely wrong. Uh, let's say if piece to move is not uh, in this little list of A or B, so it's not a valid option, then we can just give them a little error message. Um, uh, you must enter either A or B to uh, select your piece. And we would want this kind of to restart at that point. So let's just call our function again, passing through die again. Uh, so it just starts it all over again. Okay. Uh, oh, well, let's put a input, press enter to continue in there. And maybe, maybe even with like a, a new line in front of these. Okay, so um, we can sort of test that that works um, by um, calling move piece straight away. Instead of this pass code now, we can put it in to our play game routine. So assuming you can move, we're going to start asking, well, go on then, which one do you want to move? Um, so let's sort of see if this works. Move piece and the die value can go into it. Uh, let's run it and see what happens. So I'm gonna play my game, and I've got my die, uh, my board, and I'm gonna roll the die, and I rolled a one, and it says select a piece uh, to move nearer to the finish. So which piece you'd like to move? So let's try uh, something that isn't A or B, let's try J, and it says you must enter A or B to select your piece. Press enter to continue. So it started again, great. Okay, well let's say I'm gonna try A and it's gone back to the main menu because I've got no code to handle that. But it, obviously my validation is working, so I'm pleased with that. Okay, back then to, um, let's stop that running. So we've handled the uh, sort of the null case if they've typed, not typed A or B, uh, but now we need to think about, well, all right, let's say they have typed A or B. Let's start with A first of all. Uh, and what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna check that that piece can indeed be moved. So let's see, uh, we need to do if piece to move is A, okay. Now, at this stage, we need to think, right, we're going to want to, uh, if we're player one, then we've got um, some, we've got uh, a particular counter that we're interested in, right? So if that's true, then the counter I'm interested in is P1 counter one okay oh sorry and i should say and player turn is one so if if piece to move is, is a and it's player one's go then the counter i'm interested in is that one uh let's do some of the other ones l if piece to move 
is B and player turn is 1 then the counter I'm interested in is P1 C2 and we're just going to duplicate these up for uh, player 2 okay so now I've got a variable called counter and it's going to have uh, whatever is the correct whichever counter I've has been selected um, is going to be um, the one that I can investigate and do my code upon so it looks like we're going to need another kind of checking procedure we need to check if counter can be moved and we've been given some rules as to when it can't be moved so why don't we just work through each one of these and think um, okay well let's run a little routine to check if um, if any of these uh, apply then um, we're going to return false it can't be moved otherwise we'll return true it can be moved and we can get on and make the move so we're going to make another subroutine and we're going to put it above this one and we'll call it uh, check move um, is valid now is that going to be confused with check player can move it might get confusing so let's let's say check counter can move that might be less likely to be confusing we're going to need to pass the counter that we're interested in and the die value so let's look at our circumstances when it can't be moved it says if the space the piece would be moved is already occupied by the same player's other piece Okay, I think my little count technique isn't really going to work here, so uh, I'm actually going to ditch all of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, I'm just going to assume that it will pass through A or B to here. Uh, so don't worry too much about that just yet. We'll um, hopefully make sense of that in a minute. So okay, right. If it's player one's go. If it's player one's go, and if the counter that we've been passed is A, then um, they can't move if by moving either forward or backwards they would move to a space already occupied by the other players, by the same player's other piece. Well, if it's counter A, then we're really interested in P1, C1. So we're going to say, well, if. Um, ah, now. Haha, <laughs> before I do that, I need to actually translate the die move into a value. So let's say um, counter mm, counter move. Okay, we're gonna have a, a, a variable called counter move. Um, we're gonna we're gonna based on the die. So if if the die value is one, two, three, then um, the player's piece moves one, two, or three. But if the um, counter if the die value is four then the counter is going to be moved to minus one and we need to kind of have that in a variable somewhere to use that in our maths so we're going to say if die is equal to four then counter moves is going to be equal to minus one else counter moves is simply equal to the value of die so if it's if the die value is three counter moves is three if it's two it's two if it's one it's one but if it's four then we have to move minus one okay so that's just one little useful uh, we're going to need that in a moment so if it's player one's go and they've selected to move counter a we need to say well if i take the value of um so if value of player one oops player one counter one plus counter moves so now applying the dice move to it if those two together is equal to the value of player one counter two let me put those in brackets as well so they're easier then we have to return false because what we're saying is here is saying well you've selected counter a if counter a in its current position plus the move that would be made based on the die value if those two added together um, puts your counter in the same position as your other counter then that's not a valid move so we return false um, okay well all right elif counter is b we can run the same sort of code if player one counter two plus counter moves is equal to player one counter one 
return false. So that's done the code for if it's player one's turn. Uh, let's just do the whole same sort of thing, but for player two. Let's make that an elif. It's player two's go. If they've selected counter A, then this time it's if player two counter one is equal to player two counter two. Uh, and same here, player two, player two. So that it, that's one circumstance where it might fail. So let's just put that uh, test one. Um, uh, a player's counter cannot move to the same space as um, their other counter, except for I've missed something crucial. Unless it's a safe space. Can't believe I missed that. So unless it's a safe space. So let's just deal with that. Because of course if it's a player's if it's a safe space, then um actually it shouldn't matter, should it? So we can say if uh okay, so what we'll do is we'll say, well if they've chosen counter one and it's equal to hmm, safe space is one five okay so if you take their current piece and it becomes equal to their existing piece then we say well okay that's all right but if that proposed move um, then becomes equal to uh, one, which is the start, or oh, um, uh, we need to copy that, or all of that becomes equal to five, or all of that becomes equal to eleven. Then we want to pass. Else return false. So what I'm now saying, so I know I've adjusted that slightly and I'm, I'm well done if you've kept up. What we're saying is, right, it's player one's go. They've selected to move counter A. Counter A, when it is added to the die, if that happens to be the same as their counter B, well then we need to check are they on a safe space or not. So if that value, their current position plus counter moves, puts them on space one, or if it puts them on space five, or if it puts them on space 11, then actually I don't need to do any more checking. That's fine, and I can just pass, and we can carry on with our program. But if that's not the case, if it hasn't put them on either 1, 5, or 11, if it's put them on 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then uh, we need to return false because they're not on a safe space. So this isn't the neatest possible way of doing it. There's probably a more elegant way, but this way does... Um, Ah, no, I thought of a much better way to do it. Okay, I do apologize if you've stuck with me so far well done. I'm just going to make a list called safe spaces. Just like with our main menu, I can use a list for this. Safe spaces is 1, 5, and 11. Those are my safe space values. So I can just say, if player 1's counter 1 plus counter moves is equal to player 1's Count two, and we can say player one counter two is not the value of that is not in safe spaces. Then that move ain't good. Return false. Okay, that's much simpler. If their current counter plus the moves the die applies to it puts them in the same space as counter two, and counter two is not in a safe space then you can't do that one. That's that's what that code is basically saying. So let's just adjust the rest of our code to do similarly. That just has to be one. And that's player two counter one. Okay, so that should work. It's quite it's quite nice. It's quite easy to read. It almost reads like English. And um, that should that should fulfill test one. So uh, just go and do the same on your own and uh, take your time on this one, guys. I know I've moved forwards and backwards and I've made a few tweaks and changes along the way. So I'm just going to just put the whole function available. That's so far, that is the entire function on the screen. So just do a pause and check your code is exactly like mine. 
Okay, test two. According to our booklet, if the piece is on the start and the result of the dice roll is a four, you can't move. Okay, that's much easier to do. What we're doing now is saying, all right, well, if it's player one's go, so let's go back to player one and they've picked counter A, then we should be able to add another one in here. We can just say, well, okay, if P1, C1 is equal to one and die is equal to four, return false. So they've rolled a four and they are choosing to move piece A and if that happens to be, this is effectively piece A, if that's at the start and they roll a four, no, you can't do that. So that was a nice easy addition. Let's drop that into our uh, part B as well, but this time it becomes counter two. And let's do the same for player uh, two. So here, again, if they've chosen, if it's player two's turn and they've chosen A, then um, counter two, player one, player two, counter one uh, is that one. And same here. Now we're saying, okay, player two, counter two. Um, so just I'll just confirm the logic of this. We're saying, well, look, in this last instance, if it's player two's go and they've selected counter B, if counter B or player two, counter two, is at the start and the die roll is four, you can't do that, it's not a valid move, return false. So that's now done our second test. So let's make a note of it, test two. If selected counter is at the start and the player rolls a four, then they cannot move that piece. Okay, let's do the next test. Oops, not that one. Ah, you can't select your opponent's piece. Well, in our Python game, that's fine. If this was Scratch or a visual one, then you you could possibly click on something that isn't yours. But because we're not giving the users the option to click, they're just typing A or B, then that one is by default covered. Uh, and the last one says, well, if the piece is on a finish, um, you can't move it forward. If the result is not a four, you can't move it forward. So let's add that in then. Should be fairly easy to add that in. Um, if counter A, so it's player one, they've chosen A, so we can do the same thing again. We say, well, if if that is equal to 11, i.e. the finish, and die does not equal four, then that's not possible. Okay? If they've selected that counter, it's at the finish, and they haven't rolled a four, then they're not allowed to make that move. Let's copy that into all of our other ones. Can't quite... Yeah, there we go. Uh, so this is now player one, counter B, so... That should be player one counter two. So if player one counter two is at the start, is at the finish, and they roll and they don't roll a four, they can't select to move it. Uh, and similarly, let's get that lined up right. If uh, player two counter one, and for player two counter two, so player one counter one. One counter two, player two counter one, player two counter two. I think that's that's done that last test. Um, let's just add that in. Test three covered. Uh, test four was if um, the selected counter is at the finish and the die roll is not four, then the player cannot move that piece. So I think that's our check counter can move uh, routine finished. So that's all the logic for that part. Um, so we can add that and integrate that into our move piece. So um, they're going to select a piece to move. And what we're going to do is call that function. So we need to find out, well, can they move? So if um, check counter can move, check counter can move, and uh, the counter parameter, it's variable, it's going to come from piece to move, so we'll pass piece to move, and we'll pass in the die, and if that um, is true, which 
don't slightly redundant but we'll put it in uh, we're just going to pass for now and then we're going to add um, add code for moving the piece um, else we can give them an error message print um, you cannot uh, move that piece you must select your other piece instead and um, again at this stage um, we'll uh, do another input press enter to uh, try again and we'll run move piece again so we're going to call ourselves again so this is another issue so either they they might type the wrong thing in so they have to choose a piece again or if they select one that they can't move then um, we are going to um, check uh, we, if they if they select one that they can't move, then we'll say you can't move that piece. You must move your other piece instead. Press enter to try again, and then they'll be asked to enter their piece they want to make the selection for. And we haven't put the code in yet to actually make the move yet, um, but that should be enough to get us started. And we should be able to test this now. Uh, and the way I'm going to test it is instead of doing a random die, dice roll, I'm just going to do uh, make die equal to four. So um, because we know that they're all at the start and die is going to be four, I'm going to try and select a piece to move and it should tell me I can't move that piece. Oh, actually, no, it might tell me there are no legal moves to make because if I'm, I, both my pieces are at the start and I roll a four, then I can't actually move. So let's see if that works. So let's run. Let's play a game. Okay, there's my board. All things at the start and I've rolled a four and it tells me there's no legal moves for me to make. Fantastic. Good. Okay, let's now try changing things a bit. Let's move player one counter one uh, to, uh, let's say, space six and leave player one counter two at one. So let's play a game again. This time, uh, which piece would I like to move, A or B? Now I've rolled a four hasn't told me that because I'm not running the rolled ice routine uh, but I know it's a 4 because I've hard coded that so if I select B I shouldn't be able to move it so let's try it B you cannot move that piece you must select the other piece instead press enter to try again okay which piece would you like to move well let's try something completely different uh, and ah you must enter A or B okay well let's try it again let's try moving piece A you cannot move your piece, you must select on the piece. Ah, I bet that's because I've done a capital A. Let's. Which piece would you like to move? A. Hmm, you cannot move that piece, you must select your other piece to move instead. So that's not quite worked. I should be able to move piece A. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what I've done. In my routine, I believe I know what I've done, I've come up with all the circumstances why we might want to return false but I never return true if everything's okay. So let's go to the bottom of check counter cam move. Uh, and let's assume this, all of these ifs have run, they've all run to the end. We've got to the end, we've not triggered a circumstance where we've got a false, so we need to return true. Yes, you can move. If we never return true, then um, it will never trigger that it's okay. So I've added return true in at the bottom of my uh, check counter cam move. Okay, so the last line in that is now return true. Let's run it again and see what happens this time. Play our game. Um, I'm going to just prove again. So I'm going to try and move uh, counter B, and it should say I can't do it. Yet yeah, can't move that piece. Okay, fine. Let's try moving A, and that has worked. I haven't got any code to handle it, so it takes me back to my main menu. But it has worked. Wow, that was quite a uh, a big one. Uh, so hopefully. See if I can just show that again on the screen. You've got most of the code now, so I'm just going to scroll through it very, very slowly. And I'm going to ask you to just go through your code, checking, so you need to do some pausing, and checking that your code matches my code, okay? There's quite a lot in there. There's lots and lots of ifs and returns, and there's very similar lines where dice is four or dice is not equal to four. And it's very important that your code matches my code. So take your time to get this one right, and then we will reconvene for the next task.